Hey, how's it going? We're looking at a really important concept now in programming, and that is of the data structure, which is quite an abstract term, at least from our perspective in these kind of theory videos. So really, data structure is just a conceptual arrangement of data. Of course, all data in a computer is stored in the same format, just as binary, but the way we can kind of interact with it and the operations we can perform on it and so on are all kind of uh, determined by whatever data structure we use in our program code. So there are lots of different ways of storing data and so lots of different data structures. So that's important to realise as you would have well, as you would have experienced probably lots of different data structures available in languages and they vary name by name. Similar data structures or, or data structures with the same names in different languages work in slightly different ways and may be kind of stored separately behind the scenes. So you might have this might be a vector, this might be an array, might be a list. The individual properties determine which one it is in the language. This might be a matrix or a 2D array. This is a linked list and this is a graph. So different data structures uh, all are storing data fundamentally in the same way, but they behave in different ways. So preemptive mind point in here, they're processed in different ways, so they can be interacted with and so on. And different data structures are designed for different purposes. Clearly a graph is a very specific purpose, whereas you know for most data it doesn't need to be put in a graph. Um, but a graph data structure will be optimized for graph operations, funnily enough. The main data structure we're going to look at is an array. So array is still data under an identifier name by their index position. So we'll break, we'll break this down in a second. So generally, arrays have a fixed length, so a fixed size, and only contain elements of the same data type. They're said to be homogenous. So you'll have a integer array or a string array or an array containing objects of a predefined or user-defined type. So here we're declaring uh, this identifier name, my array, to be of an integer and the uh, square brackets are in this programming language to signify that it's an array. And an additional step in this language, which is Java, is to allocate some memory for the length of the array. So we're basically telling it here we need to allocate 10 blocks of memory because we're going to store 10 integers in it at some point. And this length is fixed now. And arrays are ordered, so if you put an item in index 5 and then an item in index 6, they never get swapped, they're kept in that order, which is really important. If you put an object in one position, it's not going to move from that position unless you do it yourself. So to explain this term index then, so the individual elements are referenced using this index. Index is the position within the array that they're stored in. So if we initialize some values, i.e. put some values in this array for the first time, uh, and by the way, most languages do zero indexing, so they start counting from zero. So the first position in the array, which is actually what we're doing here, we're putting one into the first position, is labelled with the index of zero. A little bit confusing, but you just got to keep that in your mind that the index is always going to be one less than the actual location, if that makes sense. So this is the tenth location, and I'm putting ten in just to jog my memory. So nine is the index is one less than the actual literal position in the array. If we try to index this array with 10, i.e. for position 11, we would have an error because we've only allocated space for 10 integers, not for 11. So you can't go outside the bounds of your array. What we've looked at so far is a one-dimensional array, i.e. storing data in one horizontal direction, at least visually, that's how we're picturing it. So we're picturing it as three distinct units if we've got three elements in the array. So this is a string array in pseudocode, so Alice, Bob and Charlie stored in three distinct blocks of this names array. You can also have two-dimensional arrays and arrays of higher dimensions than this, which uh, which have the same idea. So a two-dimensional array stores data horizontally and vertically, so more like a table. And it's a bit more confusing to display and it, it's harder to keep track of, but essentially what we've got here, we've got an array of arrays. You can see we've got a single array here, a second array here, and a third array here within a larger array called triplets. So as I say, you can think of them as being an array of arrays and they're indexed with two numbers instead of one because we need to specify essentially the row index and then the column index. So it's a little bit hard to, well, <laughs> If you think of each kind of subarray as being a, a distinct element, the first index is referencing which one you want to choose, and then you kind of go within those arrays with a second index number. So you can visualize it as being like a table. So you can see we've got our rows here, A, B, C, and then G, H, I at the other end. And here are kind of indexes within each row array, if that makes sense. So if we were referencing row of two, we want to go to look at the third array because we're counting from zero, and then we want to go to the second position with this array because we came from zero, which is H. So this would return H. And sometimes it would be referenced with two distinct closed brackets, but the idea is the same. You're referencing it with two numbers, one for kind of the conceptual row and the second for the column within that array. 
File handling is sort of related to this topic, so we're going to throw it in for good measure. So binary files are a class of files formatted so only the program can read them. So an .exe file would be a binary file. But we're going to talk about text files. So text files obviously contain characters, and they're structured in a very distinct way, which is why I'm they're related to data structures because they really are a data structure. And they're structured as lines of text. And a line of text is said to be called a record, which is another data structure. So files must be opened before they're used and closed after use. Really important. I'm sure when you've done this in class, your teachers made this very clear. So the reason why you might the reason why you have to close a file after use is first of all it frees up any resources that are being used to kind of interact with the file. It also prevents corruption because if you've closed the file at the earlier stage, nothing later in your code can cause any damage. And if maybe the file closes or your program closes unexpectedly it might corrupt um, the text file and also more importantly it flushes the buffer so a bit technical but when you write to a file to make it more efficient the data you're writing gets put temporarily in something called a buffer and then when you close it if or, or when the buffer gets full it, it saves it to the file but if you only have so many lines in the buffer so that the buffer is kind of not full then when you close it it will flush the buffer and put any remaining lines into your actual text file but if you don't close it and it closes without flushing the buffer you might not write everything you intended into your file if that makes sense so a little example of how this might look in program code so first of all we need to open our file so we can access to it and often we have to specify whether we're writing or reading to it this character here is a new line character so the program won't read this as a, a backward slash and an N, or read it as a new line character. So what this code is doing that is writing to a file, first of all we're writing record1 as a string in the first record and then we're going on to the next record which is the second line and writing 2 there as well. This is just an example, this is a bit pointless. Then we're also then writing in a second statement record3 and this is automatically going to go to the third record or the third line in the file. And then as I say we've got to close it to make sure everything is going to be okay. To do the reverse and read we have to specify in our open stage that we want to read from a file and it's creating a file object and we can do some operations on the object like read lines and what this is going to do, this is going to read the third line or the third record because we're specifying we want to read the third line. This statement here is going to just read the first six characters. So there are two different statements. This will read the first six characters, which is record, because the first record in our file now has record in it as a string. So this is what it's going to return. So arrays and records seem very similar, and we're looking at it from a theory point of view, so it's, it's impossible to say anything definitive because every language has their own style of doing things they implement these data structures in different ways. But generally arrays are homogenous, i.e. of the same type, whereas a record can be um, of different data types, and I'll show you that in a second. As we've mentioned, the data is indexed uh, in arrays using numbers, often starting from zero, not always starting from zero, so in pseudocode it might start counting from one, so watch out for that. Um, and data in records is stored using fields. So in a database, another word for a row, or a more technical word for a row, is a record, and a more technical name for a column is field. So this might be a record in a file, maybe, and there are kind of, maybe not explicit, but at least implicit fields that are kind of have their own name. So they're not numbers necessarily, they have their own name, and you could reference this record using the field. And you can see we've got three different types here. We've got a, a string, we've got a date, and we've got a number. So in a language, these might be three distinct data types. So an array doesn't have to make a lot of sense, it can just be random numbers, but a record tends to be about a single entity, so a single person or place or thing, something you're modeling some data or something you're storing some data about, like Jason Scott in this case.